Hello friends, Yossi here. How's everyone doing today? Okay, so today we're going to talk about a few really cool properties that I want to show you. There'll be about six or seven or eight of them. And uh, at the very end of this video, I'm going to give you a review of the Toronto uh, real estate market, both the homes and the condos, all the properties in Toronto real estate, because some changes to the market ha um, have been happening. And I want to, I want to um, give you a quick overview of what's going on, what I think is going to happen, and give you a bit of insight to 2019's Toronto real estate market. Okay, ready? Let's go. Okay, Yossi here. I'm a Toronto real estate agent, realtor, also a mortgage broker. If you need to buy or sell or rent or get financing, give me a shout. Let's start with my Twitter. This is where I post all my, uh, all my stuff and all the stuff that is real quick, fit to print, goes in here because I don't have time to blog every day, unfortunately, which is good, but unfortunately... Uh, so, for example, some assignments here, King Blue, a million dollars for a high floor with a wraparound terrace, very nice. Um, this, is a, this is a beautiful town, a Quinn and Dufferin, same one, Thompson, Queenies, that's a really nice Harhe building, that's a fantastic assignment opportunity. Uh, some stuff about the Google Sidewalk, that's always cool, more King Blue, I think King Blue is going to hit a home run in 2019, and you can notice of... I've been including the prices uh, per square foot just to give you an idea of where we are because I think I think it's very very useful to start comparing properties based on uh, dollar per square foot. Now, how does this work? Uh, it's very simple. You take the asking price in this case four six eight, and you divide it by amount of square footage uh, three eight seven. Okay. Uh, do not include the balcony. Uh, balcony is never ever included in the size of the unit if anyone is doing that do not work with them do not believe them run away because they're trying to convince you of a better value but really what they're doing is increasing the square footage to create an artificial lower psf that's not how we do it my friends we are here real investors we look at everything straight up flat out we don't judge we just look at the information and then we make a decision based on the information that we have okay that is real investing we do not include the balcony. And so you know, balconies in Ontario are, in most condos, are not part of the unit because they're considered, like this one here, it's a really large balcony. It's considered common element, okay, exclusive use. That means that the building owns, you know, the, the condo board, you and everyone else together, uh, cumulatively own the balcony. That's why you can't do whatever you want with the balcony. There's certain rules, you know, what you can. You can't put your bicycle up and so on and so forth. So, for example, a small unit like this already 11, uh, 16 a foot at 466. If I add this balcony here, you know, that that's maybe, say, 18, just let's run it up to 20% of, of, uh, of uh, the unit size. That means I'm going to get an artificially PSF of about 20% lower. That is completely wrong. Anyone's doing that, run away. They don't know what they're doing or they're trying to cheat you, okay? And we don't do that. So... Take the amount asking 529, divide by 574, you got 923, that's really good. So you can see right away uh, the most price is now over a thousand square foot, over a thousand dollars a foot. That means that if you can find something, that's an older uh, uh, flyer, uh, I'm including them all now, but you can make the number yourself and you see it's less than a thousand. Um, if, if it's less than a thousand, it's pretty good in my opinion because that's kind of the going rate. And if it's over a thousand, you know, you, you can expect to find high commodity prices like King Blue anywhere along the subway line, King West, uh, a little bit on the east side, you'll see 1200 a foot. And then 1500 a foot, you'll see a Shangri La, uh, although you can still get a 12 maybe. Nobu is closer than 15. Uh, maybe the same Regis, previously the Trump. Um, anything in Yorkville, you'll see 1500 to 2500 of the four seasons. And along, along the Young Subway line, you know, even up there, it's going to be very expensive. And if you want to buy uh, cheaper, cheaper per foot, then look for a lower PSF number, okay? That's very, very important. Um, start making a comparison based on that. But don't forget, don't compare. This is like a crazy deal, 1000 bucket e condo, okay? If this is still available, buy it because this is an amazing unit. And I even give you the, my projection here. For 2022, 1500. I think it's going to arrive a lot sooner, but you know, uh, let's be a bit uh, conservative here. Okay, so you'll see Kaplan at your service. Um, this is my YouTube video channel. You're probably watching this right now. Please subscribe to this channel. 
make a comment like it there's lots of comments coming in and lots of new subscribers which I'm really really grateful for for each and every one of you thank you very much and you know there's no bad comments all co all comments are great all comments are good regardless you're pro or against supporting or not you know every opinion is valid every perspective is valid together we create our own economy um, by looking at all these perspectives and you know the perspective that has the most amount of people believing in it usually wins I mean that's gonna happen so if everybody believes the market is going up the market will go up because it's an expectation of it and people will pay more for it and if most of us believe the market is gonna go down it means I'm not gonna pay you a price I want less I want to wait for it then chances are the market will go down so together we create a common shared reality and that is true to real estate that is true to everything okay and what I do in this channel is I show you uh, some stuff like top five penthouses it is still good to buy so more of a market commentary I teach you how to invest at 3Ls. That's a really great video. I talk a bit about Bitcoin and I give you a um, preview of buildings like uh, like Junction House, okay? So, or I'll go to Brantford and make a video for you. Um, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of videos here. Uh, please check it out. You are ready. Okay, this is my website, Urban Realty Toronto. What you'll find on this website, you'll find pre-construction and assignments. So if you're looking for pre-construction condors, kind of you wanna you wanna get in, you wanna see the. I'll post it as as soon as it becomes relevant. Not maybe two years in the future, not too late. But when it's relevant, I'll post it. When I think it's good, uh, if it's a good project, I'll post it. If I don't if I don't like it, I'm not gonna spend time on it. I'm just gonna ignore it and focus on what I like. Okay, that's very important to me because you know I'm not here to bash or to be negative. I'm here to help us all create value and make great investments. And here at the very bottom, you'll find trending now. So this is what people are looking for. Some of these are older ones, you know, no thumbnail because maybe the Google, uh, the Google, the, the WordPress change algorithm, whatever, but most of it are great. And what you'll find here, there's a direct link to various searches. So when you hit any of these searches, like if you want to see what's for sale at Junction, just hit it and it'll go right to my system. You'll see the searchrealty.co and it will put the search for you. Okay, special searches, most expensive, that's kind of fun, townhomes, penthouses, corner with pools, and links to uh, other sites that we have in here. Um, you can join uh, other subscribers every time that I post. This is, this is not the newsletter. This is when I post something on this website, uh, you, you get a, a little notification for WordPress itself. Okay, it's automated. Okay, moving in, uh, moving on, uh, Yorkville Luxury Real Estate. This is where I'll post the luxury properties. Penthouses, really beautiful things that I like, kind of the fancy stuff goes in here. And I try to keep it over a million, which is, you know, at the time was like really crazy, but today is pretty much, you know, half of the market. So there you go. And similar content, a lot of pre construction, some really nice stuff, um, some assignments. Let's jump in and I want to review a few of the really cool properties that we have. That's the premise. And remember, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a review of the Toronto condo market, the entire property market for Toronto, and where is it going, okay? With a bit of commentary. We're gonna start with 468 Wellington. This is an amazing building. It only has this building has 10 units in total. That's it. Look at this thing. It's kind of a crazy Batman. <laughs> What's the guy's name from Batman? Uh, oh, I forget. That when he's not Batman, you know, Jacqueline Hyde. When he's not Batman, that's where he lives. And when he's Batman, you know, he goes in the elevator to the cave and swims out or something like that so you, you got your own cave with the wine cellars and a beautiful kitchen and this place is just all over the place but it's actually an old factory uh it's said that about this is the building about a million dollars was uh spent here to make this unit into what it is and man some rock stars will be here some movie stars will be here you know this is fancy this is not about cramming bedrooms this is just about a giant space 6.7 million asking at the moment second floor uh, it's beautiful there's some more info here okay so that's really cool I'll just go go to yossi.searchrealty.co for the direct search okay this is uh, Theatre Park, 224 King Street. That is directly across from Roy Thompson Hall. This was built by uh, Brad Lamb, Brad Lamb Development. This is a lovely, lovely uh, unit. It is a large unit. It's got a four bedroom and four bathrooms. It's just spacious, beautiful loft, clean, modern design look. I really, really like it. You know, for six million, 
that's pretty good that's six million Canadian dollars that's about three US million <laughs> whatever it is it's not a lot in US that's the point the point is that you know if you're buying in US because you're maybe from the US or other countries you're getting a great deal this terrace is absolutely phenomenal this is the way to do a terrace my friend okay it's large you can put 50 guests in here and you can have beautiful summer night here or put some uh, heating lamps and uh, and have uh, have people all over all over town all over all all around okay this is just beautiful I love it uh, the view is great the location is amazing if you're working in the financial center you can walk to work if you're singing at the uh, Roy Thompson just cross the street this is this is a lovely place that's not a bad place to be all right 5.98 million uh, for this unit this is the penthouse by the way 3270 square feet of interior space and the wraparound uh, terrace of 2,100 square feet. So this gives you about 6,000 square feet. So actually the price, if you include the terrace, and the reason I will include the terrace in this one is because it really is a part of the building. Um, you can put your bicycles there if you want. Nobody can see. That's a 1,000 bucket foot. Um, and without it, you know, it'll be more. Um, but bear in mind that penthouses usually will have a 10 to up to 30% difference on the price of a regular unit in the same building so if the average of the building say for a large unit uh, if you compare it for like a 1500 square feet unit probably cost you in this building two million dollars okay um, so times four should be eight million so you're actually getting um, this unit at, at a discount if you think about it okay it is actually to me it looks like a fair price Okay, because what you get, the uniqueness, uniqueness on, uh, of it. Obviously, a penthouse this size and that price is not something that changes hand really quickly. It may take a month or a year to sell it, but that's how it is. That's how the end luxury unit game plays, whether it's an expensive home, a house, or a condo. You know, those large units, they actually give you very, very good value because they will be built with the top of the top in features, and finishes and you can expect the absolute best workmanship the materials attention to details on these units so all in all if you need to um, store two to six million dollars a piece of expensive beautiful proper real estate is a great idea especially when it's got so much Sun so much views you have the top floor elevator opens uh, right to your place just hit the fob and you're home okay you're right up there the whole floor this is phenomenal. Okay, and now um, to something completely different, like those funny guys say. And this is a converted church at 260 High Park Avenue. Okay, uh, there's a few units there available. Uh, some of them are smaller, but this is one of the uh, prize units. This is a large unit. It's got two bedroom, two bath, and it's just over 2,021 uh, square feet. So it's over a thousand square or it's probably 13 or 1400 foot and this is what you get for it okay when you are looking into a property that is top of the top of the top expect the price per foot maybe to be slightly higher but when you look at the value the value is phenomenal okay and you get this beautiful massive terrace and it's 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 a nice big corner of, of the church so that is did you see this whoa <laughs> That is gorgeous. That is very, very nice. So what do we got here? Two-story, two-bed, two-wash, vaulted ceilings. Look at that. That's what you're paying for, okay? This uniqueness, this beauty, this conversion that, you know, you can't really get it anywhere else. That's a good store value, okay? I like quality. I like uniqueness. I like something that is memorable because when it's time to trade, you know, you you know you're gonna get someone very serious about this unit that appreciates architecture, that appreciates art, that has the funds. You know, most of the units, most of these units are bought for cash, because the people that buy them have a lot of cash available, and they go for these units, paying cash. Okay, because it's an investment. They just buy the property because they buy an asset that they think will appreciate. So here's the info, <clears throat> and you remember. Uh, you get the scorecard and you can score whatever you like here make some nice patterns whatever works okay all right um, here's a smaller cheaper unit 
which is very, very useful in my opinion. Uh, this is the Thompson Toronto at 629 King Street. The unit number is 628. The street number is 629. Uh, currently asking 5149. Uh, these are the bread and butter units at the Thompson residences facing north, facing Queen Street. What you see here, that would be 95, uh, 60, 650 uh, King, and on the other side is 95 Bathurst. Okay, so the Brioche Dore coffee shop is at the bottom here, and we're actually uh, atop of a Starbucks here. And that's the unit. It's got, it does have a small, you can't see it here, but it does have a small bedroom. There it is. Um, and and that, that's a depiction of the, of the Thompson. These units are rent for very, very high amount, probably the highest dollar per foot rental in the city you'll get at the Thompson. They're quite sought after, so those are great investment. And this unit is about 450 square feet, if I remember correctly. So you can see prices are already over $1,000 a foot. But in my opinion, still still a good price because these units, you know, at, uh, at uh, King West, Big King West, 750 1500 foot. So this is close to 1000 and not even a block away, this unit will be over 700000 you get my drift. Sometimes you can find a resale property that is actually amazing value. And also, don't don't forget that you know you don't have the closing costs. You have a new property, so there's a lot of advantage to buying something that exists already. Okay, the next one we're going to look at pair 27. I'm going to speed it up a bit. 29 Queens Key East. Uh, this is asking just under a million five. There's a lot of nice units in this building. There's also a lot of problematic floor plans in this building so do me a favor if you go into any of these buildings with the problematic floor plans give me a call because i i can save you a lot of tears because you know i walked into some of these units and this one is great but some some of them are not the best so you got to be cautious you got to be careful look at this i absolutely love it you're right on the water for those who like it it's amazing the quality of this building is very very good this area is coming along really nicely and quickly and probably would appreciate a lot, a lot more in the next coming years. Uh, if Google Sidewalk is coming there, it probably is. It's just a matter of, you know, the privacy and all that stuff. What's Google information is going to extract from us and how it's going to keep us. But this is a good place to live. There's a lot of uh, high-tech companies that are coming to the area. And you definitely want to have uh, something here that you can either live in or rent it out uh, to people that work in the area. This is a larger unit with two beds, three baths. Okay, 1276 square feet, so just over a thousand bucks a foot. You can see uh, 10 foot ceilings, uh, all the high end appliances. It's actually pretty good, you know, it's, it's very, very nice. And it's, I think that building has come out a long way, it took a long time to build, and it looks great. So, there you go. Okay, and, and you, can, you can see some more information here. Just scroll down, look at the whole thing. You can see the parking, all that stuff, its own. Okay, great, good unit. And you know, if you like it, you can. Uh, you can request a showing date, and now this will come to me. You can add it to your favorites, to your notes, whatever you want. Okay, but let's go back downtown, and this is Bisha, 88 Blue Jay Way, also called Bisha. Uh, there's, there's a few, there's always like, you know, between four and eight good units in this building for sale. I picked this one, first of all, because it's got so many eights, which I love. Uh, there's eight, 88 in the Blue Jays, there's 2808 in the unit number, there's eight in the price. Okay, it's a nice corner unit. It's got nice views. It's nice. It's bright. It's new. It's clean. Uh, very, very nice building. I think this building will have a very long term, very long life. I think I think this 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 one turned out really really well. I like it. You know, I like I like everything about this building. Um, there's the, the partners that are involved are very very good, smart people. They really get it. They understand the city life, and it shows. You know, when you have a developer that understands city life and their partners that really are involved in the building, you're going to get something that reflects that. And, you know, you get livable spaces, you get nice views, you get lots of light. This is really nice. Okay. Uh, okay, so you can see here. What do we got here? Uh, 944 square feet indoor, 107 out, 9 foot ceiling, very nice unit. Bisha is already over 1,000 foot. And, you know, next door is Nobu at 15 okay this is very very close so still a very very good uh, good price here um 87 peter recently done by menkees this is a penthouse 
Pen as 310-1145-90 at the time. Uh, not a lot of information about this unit, but you can just, just get an idea of, of, of the height and the location. You know, two bath, two bath, 900 square feet, 1145, 12. So it's pretty similar. That like you can see where this is going. Okay, you can see that this just sub thousand square feet are now asking on the high floors with good views, open views, are asking well over a million now. Okay, so that's where we at. Okay, so this was my review, and I want to take you to a bit of a review of the Toronto real estate market. And I start with just Googling myself, Toronto real estate market. You'll see Kaplan is curious to see what comes up. Now, mind you, I'm logged in here, so it's going to give me slightly different results to give you, but whatever. Uh, there's some videos here that, it's, you know, and you can see the Facebook page. I'm not a big Facebook fan. You know, it's there. I don't really post to it, but it's there. If you want to follow on Facebook, everything that I do on Twitter goes in the Facebook page. So if you follow on, on Facebook, if you'd like to give me a five-star rating, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and th that's pretty much the same information. Twitter is the source. Okay, here's my LinkedIn search realty page and some other pages I'm involved with. And what's important to see here is that once you once you Google that, you're going to get different results depending on your previous Googles. And don't forget that Google will give you some sort of information. If you use another search engine, not a Google, like a DuckDuckGo, will give you a bit different information. Okay, Yahoo and Google are more or less the same monster right now and forever will be. And what we're seeing here in the real estate market, there is there is a bit of a of a of a people asking, will the real estate market come to a halt? Will it slow down? Will it come down? Some people say, will it crash? You know, there's always someone yelling, the real estate market is crashing. And that's been that's been happening since the very first days. Usually what you'll find is once you get to know these people, you know, their life is crashing. <laughs> I think in life, you know, uh, crash and success are really two perspectives on the same thing. Okay, um, you as an investor, me as an investor, as a trader, right? I'm a trader, and what I do, I help people trade. But we trade real estate. We just trade one massive stock at a time called the condo. We don't buy and sell, you know, fractions of things like uh, like crypto or a full stock. You know, I buy one Amazon stock, whatever it costs, a thousand bucks. I don't know what it costs. I don't even look. Um, but we buy and sell these units, which are really kind of like stocks. But the difference is that they're real, they're not on paper. You can walk in there, you can see it, you can feel it, smell it, taste it, touch it. You can get a key and someone will pay you to live in there. And they will pay your expenses. You know, the mortgage, the condo fees, the, called the maintenance, the municipal taxes, positive cash flow. These are good things. These are things that you almost never get in the stock market. And you really don't know what's going on when you buy stock because you don't know who's cooking the books. Okay, and you don't know what the rule is going to be tomorrow and who invested and, and what's going on behind the scene here there's no behind the scene you own it you put the tenant in and you have a guaranteed cash flow you know exactly how much you get you know exactly what your expenses are and you're good to go and you can sleep at night okay so now we're seeing here now don't forget the media all and, and i've told you that before and i'm going to say it again all media is fake media all news is fake news everyone have interests you know the reason that these guys tell you this and this guy's that and this guy's that is because they all have interest number one they must obey their masters whoever controls these media outlets you know they gotta obey because they get instructions maybe not what to say exactly but you know we need you to send this message the market is up the market is down don't be fooled my friends every single media you see and i don't care if it's cbc i don't care if it's a corporation whatever it is okay someone owns it and tells it what to say so we're going to look at the numbers in a minute because the numbers don't lie. But if all the media come together and everyone's saying the market's going up, everyone's going to believe the market's going up, going to have a, an idea that the market's going up, and the market will go up. Okay? And if everyone's telling you, oh, the market's going down, everyone's going to believe the market's going down and start short selling and the market will go down. That's how it works. Now, when we go to TREB, okay, to the Market Watch page, and uh, they got it working again, for this month, you can look at the historic statistics, and it's we're starting at 1972. We had 14,000 sales on the system, recorded at $32,000 um, for one unit. And in uh, 2017, we got a bit of a slowdown from 113. But don't forget, this is only resales. That does not include assignments and does not include new sales, which are probably double that number. 
and the average price on the system here is 822 now when we look at the graph it really helps to see so remember in the 90s you know if you're old enough and you're from canada oh you'll see remember the 90s it's gonna happen again and i you know i still get these i still get these and a lot of the people used to call me in the past you know when i was starting out um in the mid 2000s and asking me about the old market i would say well you know it's different now toronto is growing immigration look at me i'm an immigrant everyone i know is an immigrant we're all coming to town, we're good people, we're working really hard, we're not lazy, we're here, we're here to do good, and we're buying property. So that's what's happening. And here, the things got heated up a little bit too quickly. Interest rates went up too high, and it gave the market a bit of a down until here we open the gates. We open the gates, and look at this. In the last couple of years, the appreciation is just insane, my friend. It's really, really fast. Now, Will it continue the way? Look, I, I personally, I hope not. I think, I think more of a, of, a, of, a, of a sliding scale here will be better, but it could, it could because there's so much money in the system. There's so much money in the world. Canada is immigrant friendly. You know, you can come here with a million bucks, buy a property and become an immigrant, and you don't even have to live in your property when you buy it, okay? So, you know, we see that foreign tax, but you know, those are not good solutions because where that tax money go to anyways? It's not to me and to you, right? So I'm not sure what's happening with that, but I would have some, some and maybe one day I'll make a video of, of what to do with this. But for now, this is a video about the market, okay? So don't start yelling to me about the market crashing. I know it's your favorite topic, but for one time, my friend, just, just hold on, okay? Take a deep breath. What's going to happen here? If you look at this, this appreciation, okay, if we continue it here, um, maybe we are a little bit heated up. If we are a little bit heated up and we got to be here, that means that maybe it'll take us another couple of years. And that means a couple of years, maybe we'll see a bit of a slowdown. But it doesn't mean we will because there's so much money in the world and there's so much fresh money coming into the country in terms of investment, in terms of immigration. Don't forget the Canadian dollar is very, very weak. It's cheap to buy in Canada. So if there's any factory left in Canada, I would buy it. If there's real estate in Canada, I would buy it. If, the, if I can get my, my hands on, on, uh, on you know, um, maybe a, a mine of gold or some oil stuff, although the oil price is low right now, it may come back. If the electric car is not coming here soon enough, Canada is an amazing place to invest. You know, it's, it's safe here. The water is good. The air is good. There's lots of, there's lots of room to grow. And I think what you look in here, you're looking at exactly these things, you know. People love Canada. The world loves Canada. And that's what you're seeing. And when, when the world started to discover Canada and really like, I got to get out of here. I want to come to Canada. Here will, here's what's happening. And the other thing is, you understand that globally, everyone is moving to the cities. Okay, so people are moving to the cities. So even if it's going to, you know, even if it went up a little bit too quickly, you still have these amazing products. I mean, look at these things here, okay? This is a world-class city. Now, we got a lot of work to do, my friends. This is not over. We got a lot of stuff to do. We got to clean up this town, make it even better, you know, do everything we do better. But when you look at these things, you realize that we live in an advanced place, okay? And we want to become uh, a tech center for the world. We want to become research center for the world we're going to be we want to be a bi biochemistry medical research center for the world and in many ways we are and we want more of that okay and our greatest asset in canada my friends is not the natural resources it's us we we you me everyone else are the greatest resource of canada you get that we are not what's around us, it's we, what we do, what, are, what we do with ourselves. You know, we can all become amazing at one thing. And it doesn't, you know, some of us are engineers, but some of us can be teachers, doctors, builders, artists, whatever it takes, you know, uh, community workers, anything you like. Canada is a leader and needs to be a leader. And the more we lead, the more we prosper, okay? So this is about leadership. This is about global leadership. This is what it's all about. And the more we stay on track of global leadership, the more we will see this. So when I look at the media, and remember, all media is fake media, all news is fake news because they all have a certain interest to make you believe in this or another way. And I don't care which way. 
they pull you right or left, to me they're all the same. I believe myself. I believe what I see, I believe what I feel, and I believe the graphs that I look at. So, okay, you know, um, I don't have 24% uh, inflation like I had before. I, I have a prime rate of about 4 right now, which is okay. Um, I don't know if they'll bring it to 5, probably not. I think maybe 3, I saw somewhere they said that they're expecting one more in the States and then two more next year, and then a reduction in 2020. We may not even get to more increasing. Now, obviously, the Feds and the government and the banks would love to see higher interest, but it may cause a lot of trouble to everyday life, and you don't want people on the streets in yellow vests, okay? That's why you don't see it on the media. There's a million people in yellow vests out on the streets in Europe, in Paris, but you don't see it here because the media doesn't want you to think about it or to see it. We just want to create a very specific view, and that's what the view is, okay? So we want this just to come up nice, just nice and nice, no problems, okay? So we need safe. We need to play it safe. Canada needs to play safe. You know, we don't need to get in anyone's backyard. We just got to stay home and work our thing. We got GM to worry about. We got Oshawa to worry about. We got us to worry about. And we got to focus on ourselves. We got to focus on our own well-being, our emotional well-being, our financial well-being, our health, everything. You know, we got to take care of ourselves and each other in order to create prosperity for everyone around us. That's the real message here, okay? So now back to a, few, a little bit of numbers and then I'm done for today, okay? The amount of sales have decreased. Now, I don't know why Trev puts it, you know, yesterday on the right and today on the left because we are reading in English from left to right. Now, mind you, my first language is from right to left. So I look at it and go, what the hell is going on? Why would they put this on the right? Is it to confuse us? Or are they confused? I don't know. I should send them a tweet. And here you can see that the average uh, price is seven three eight three seven eight eight three four five. So seven eight eight up from seven six one. So you know twenty seven thousand dollars. So it's not that much. Okay. This is to me is good. This is a good sign because I think that if we have just a little bit of increase, together pepper it with inflation together with what you should be getting more you know your job should pay you more at least five percent every year if they're not you gotta look for a new job because when you switch jobs usually you can you can make that gap that's why people need to change jobs every couple of years and then your job will go to someone younger who can get paid a little less and you gotta find a more senior job to catch up with this with inflation or you know become an entrepreneur or have a side business and start making extra money and when you look here, uh, sales and average price by major to home type, it'll break up the sales and the average price for 16905 total. And again, here, average price. So the average price of detach is a million three. Sorry, in a 416 is a million three, and 905 is 900. So you got an average of a million buck for 2018. Okay. The semi is at 800,000. A townhouse, which I think to me is the hottest, hottest thing to buy, the townhouse right now is 650, and the condo apartment is 556. This is where you're going to see the highest appreciation in these two, the townhouse and the condos. That's where you're going to see the highest appreciation. Okay. Um, now here it says it went down a bit, maybe because the large townhouses were so expensive that it came down a little bit, but the condo is still coming up by seven, and the detached came at uh, the semi. Uh, came up at 17% in the 416 because they were in the market's eyes under appreciated, underpriced. So people that got priced out of a house look for the next best thing, which is a, uh, a semi. So they went for that, and that's why there was a lot of demand for that type of product. And that's why you see the price went up quickly on that one. Okay? So that's what it is. And then if you want to drill down, drill down all you want. We're not going to do it today. It's just endless, 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 endless. And you know, you can just. Spend hours of your life in here. It's really like broken down into so many little things. Um, so you know it's there. But the main message is here. Look, look over here uh, in the sales activity. When prices go up really quickly, people pull down a bit. You know, they stop to go, man, this is really crazy. Can I afford this? Will the market keep going like this or will it come down? 
And the other thing that you got to remember about Toronto, that we have no beds. I told you that many times before that Canada needs a million beds. And Ontario probably needs 300,000 beds, okay? And, and the GTA needs at least 150,000 beds, probably a quarter million, okay? Quarter million for the GTA, half a million for Ontario, and another half a million for the rest of Canada. You know, we'll give BC 150,000 beds, and the rest will spread it out. And finally, we have a bit of relief. But we need a million beds, you know, not 4,000 here, 12. We need a million beds. We need to have... We gotta be brave, my friends. We gotta be brave and realize we need a million beds in Ontario. And anyone is is providing beds right now is doing great for themselves and providing a good service for the people of Canada. Okay, so that's why every project you see is selling out, and that's mainly what's pushing the prices up. So it's not like people are gonna stop buying because we need more beds. Okay, so maybe the appreciation will be lower or slower, which is great. I, I welcome it actually because I think it's I live here, you know. I'm I'm just like everyone else. I, I gotta I gotta go through the tribulations of life just like everyone else. So that's okay. But that is actually alarming because when this number goes down, that means that there's less supply. So the appreciation didn't happen that quickly because the price was already very, very up, very, very up so hot that you know it didn't go up that much, but there's also smaller supply, okay? People are buying less, but also I know from looking for stuff, I can't find units for my buyers. I got a long wait list of buyers looking for units. So that is the story, my friend, okay? It's a mixed bag. In one end, you have the prices going up really, really quick, okay? Um, very, very fast. And I showed you in a previous video how downtown many buildings I actually analyze it to a building level and show you 24% appreciation in year over year for the last 2016, uh, 17, 18, something like that, if I remember correctly. So that's what you're looking. I mean, in the last 10 years, you know, it, it's been more than double, okay? It, it, it didn't take long to double. It, take, it took less than 10 years to double, okay? Toronto takes seven to eight years to double. So even if it took 10 years to double, that's still a very, very high rate of appreciation. And it's probably the best asset class to own is real estate, okay? So buy smart, be smart. A lot of people telling me, oh yeah, I bought this and that. And like, I can't tell them, oh man, like you bought a shitty unit. Like, why would you do that? You could have called me and I would have gotten you a better unit that wasn't advertised for a better price from the same developer. But okay, you know, like you need to be smart, you need to be feel smart. But at the end of the day, when we come to sell, you know, me and my clients will usually maximize more than everyone else. Our profits are usually better. And it's not because we sold for higher price. You know, we, we, we have to sell at market, but we buy better units. And those better units get higher PSFs, okay? That's the trick. We need to get, where's that thing? We need to get higher PSFs. And in order to get a higher PSF, you need to buy right. You need to learn how to buy right. And that's really what my job is. I mean, when you buy from me, you know, there's no cost with me. Sorry, not from me because it's not my unit. Um, when you buy with me, there's no higher cost to it. Uh, but when you go straight to the developer, they will probably download you, offload, Something that is not as optimal. And because, you know, like you come by yourself, they don't have to give us, they can tell, you know, that's all the units I have, but maybe they do have a couple of units that are better value, but they just haven't released them. But they will listen to me. All right? So this is Yossi. I wish everyone the best of luck in life, in business, in love, in health, in happiness, in wellness. Call me if you want to chat. Call me if you want to talk real estate. Call me if you want to talk investments. There's a lot of deals I'm doing that I don't even put on Twitter or YouTube or Facebook or anything. You know, like when people call me, some of these things, I just don't want to talk about them in public. Not because they're good deals. It's just that, you know, I, I, some of them I just prefer to talk to a few people that I know they will appreciate the opportunity and they go for it. And a lot of that stuff, you know, that's old school. That's real market. That's real word of mouth marketing, you know. Yossi, what do you got going? I said, well, you know, I got this guy who's going to offload this unit here. Or I got this developer who needs to uh, needs to close on five more units so they can get the construction financing. Or, you know, so-and-so is about to close and I decided not to close because whatever, you know, they'd rather just take the money and go. They got a new job in another country or they got married or they had a kid. And, you know, things like that. 
so there's a lot of opportunities everywhere and it's really about just you know picking up the phone and calling send an email and call send a text and call it's all good you guys are great have a great day keep in touch you'll see out